And we're back, guys. Woohoo! Here we are once again. The next part here. And so this part, as I was talking about before, as I'm doing the stealth thing right now, um, this was the part that gaming journalists, quote unquote, again, uh, had problems with. And if you just do, if you just go this route here. This very specific route, you just completely avoid the fountain, that the intended path they want you to take, and you just pull down this guy, and then you climb up like this. You're gonna climb up after. Oh, my bad, I forgot about those two. But yeah, we're gonna climb up, and then we're gonna hide behind here, and then we're going to go like. Yeah, we're just gonna stealth kill him, and then Flint takes care of the other guy. Now there have been times where I've been caught. Um, by doing that before, because some of the guys over there on the left that you saw a second ago um, had been turned around and saw me. So it's not completely foolproof, but it works about like 95% of the time. And it just makes life way easier there. Uh, and that's really the only tricky part to this chapter. Um, and I really feel like it was because of the, the players' lack of experience in uh, stealth that makes that part difficult at first. But once you figure out a way to go that works for you, like I did, um, it, it's very easy. And this part, I really wish you could use the tranquilizer gun later in the game. I really wish you could. Uh, you know, aside from the fact that you can use the, uh, tweak to always make it so you equip it, and then have, like, infinite ammo so you can keep using it again and again and again, um, aside from that, uh, <laughs> you can't, it's, it doesn't make an appearance beyond this point in the game, and it's a really missed opportunity because while it does have limited range, it would make latter parts of the game that you that they give you the option to stealth through a lot more interesting um, sh would it have been easier Sh sure yeah but the point is is that it would be fun whereas um, stealthing in general in this game and in uncharted 3 especially can be pretty damn infuriating if you just make one minor fuck up and then that totally screws up uh, the rest of that section for you, because then they send way an a way another wave of enemies at you, uh, simply because you got caught. And it's kind of annoying design, but I guess it's whatever. So now we're waiting here for Flynn here. Come on, throw it up already. Come on, come on, I gotta climb up there. Come on, let me go. Okay. So, I mean, it's annoying design, but... I can see why they do it that way. <laughs> I almost forgot about this guy popping up. I almost forgot. I almost forgot, but no, I remembered. I remembered. I got it. Um, but yeah, you know, and Uncharted has never really been about stealth. It's always action. But it's nice that they provide the option, even if the stealth mechanics are very uh, bare bones and basic. So, All right, despite that, uh, the stealth, you know, stealth in this game can be pretty rewarding for you. And it's kind of sad that most people seem to think that you can't, you actually cannot uh, stealth other parts of the game that they don't specifically lay it out for you to do stealth. But you actually can. In Uncharted 2, you can actually stealth kill uh, entire rooms that they otherwise probably didn't intend for you to do that, but you can. Um, or at least in some parts, I, I'm pretty sure, yeah, some parts you can. And, I, and I'm and i going to demonstrate some of that if I can in this playthrough. Um, it's going to be hard, though, because AI patterns are completely random and RNG-based. So, herp de derp Little editing coming up. Oh, God, Jesus. Okay, we're back. Uh, yeah. So, as I was saying before, I had to go take care of something. Um, it's kind of sad that people tend to believe that you can't stealth the parts that yeah. weren't intended to be stealthed through. 
in Uncharted 2, but you can. Uh, the fact the option is there is really awesome. But in Uncharted 3, it, as I showed in my Melee-only playthrough, which you can find um, with no commentary on my channel, that you cannot stealth through parts of the game that look like it's even intended for you to stealth through. The ballroom, the famous example is the ballroom on the cruise ship. Uh, you cannot stealth that part of the game. I am convinced you cannot do that. They give you the TAU there because they want you to headshot the enemies rather than um, try to stealth kill them. Because they know they designed it in a way that you um, are not supposed to stealth through that part. Um, it ta it, if you could stealth through that part, it takes away the whole challenge of that, s of that segment, of that chapter. And it's really kind of sad. It's, it's totally silly, and it's just limiting the player for no reason other than to create artificial difficulty. And, you know, you saw I died a bunch because I was doing melee only. Uh, you know, I died a bunch there because of how trial and error it is and how the AI patterns are so random and RNG. There's no real way to control the AI in these games. Um, because literally they have godlike aim uh, and that's because of your regenerative health and and they have and their patterns are so random. Y you don't know when they're going to start running towards you until they're already right up in your face shooting you. Um, so yeah, Uncharted 2 doesn't have that much of a problem, but that's because the enemies and the AI in this game, they're more defensive. They're not as offensive as Uncharted 3 or Uncharted 1. And in a way, that sort of hurts this game because then you're just re relegated to sitting in cover all day, which you saw, which you'll, you'll see um, at some point, I'm sure. I'm sure you're just going to see me sit behind cover and take out guys rather than move around and um, gun people down. It depends on how the AI, how active the AI will be, basically, <laughs> in this playthrough. But nevertheless, I wish they, they struck a better balance in Uncharted 3 because they really made them offensive. Um, like, pretty close to the offensive levels of Uncharted 1. And while Uncharted 2 hit a nice balance for, you know, gaming journalists, quote-unquote, and regular players to overall enjoy the game, when you start replaying it on multiple playthroughs, you start to notice that if you get super good at the game, that you can just, if you know what you're doing, you can just sit behind cover the majority of the time and just gun people down. And when when the shotgunners or other types of enemies get closer to you, you can then just use your movement options like the like bunny hopping to quickly move to another piece of cover and then just continue to wreak havoc. But anyway, I digress. Uh, what's happening here? Well, let's see. Blue fire just came out of the tarp. And oh, look at this. It's a map. It's a very, very blue map. Uh, indicating a landscape, yeah, obviously. And where they this mountain must can find the, the ships. Um, we find that mountain. We find the ships. Like I said, the pacing Are in this game, the they just the ocean shove you right away the into the, the um, uh, crux of the of the of the, of the story, like what they're what they're looking for, they they specifically tell you what they're looking for, and then they tell you, uh, you know where you're going next, and then they transition to the next area, and then that area that you're in transitions to the next area, and then for the rest of the game after this certain after this next after like you're in Nepal. Everything just flows together. You're just, you just go from one um, landscape to the next, um, because they're all connected. Whereas in Uncharted 3, they just made a whole crap ton of, of transitions. They didn't have any um, levels designed to where you would then suddenly find yourself in the next. In the ne another part of the world. 
Nepal, okay, Nepal straight to uh, near the end of the game is, is, is masterfully crafted. Like, it's really well planned out. And while they say that they use the same method they used for Uncharted 3 that they did for Uncharted 2 to craft a game's story and set pieces, I don't buy it. I really don't buy it. I think that's... There's no way you could have such, you know... Oh, hold on here. I gotta... Oh, oh no. Okay, I'm back. Oh, boy. Jesus. Sorry, I had to do something really quick, but, um... As I was saying before, I got interrupted again. Um, there is... Uh, crap, what was I even talking about? <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter now. Uh, we're, we're, let's just run through here. This is the end of the chapter. All I remember now was the pacing. That's right. There's no way... You could have Uncharted 2 as masterfully paced. You know, going from the Paul, then from the Paul to um, the temple, and then from the temple to um, outside the temple to where then you're running from Lazarevich to then where you're at the train yard, and then the train yard takes you up into the snowy region, and then the snowy region takes you um, to the village, and then the village takes you to another snowy region, and then the village takes you to the monastery. All of that does not have any significant transitions at all, except for when Drake um, is caught in the snow, I guess. And yes, I'm sorry that I'm kind of talking about the plot already, like, very vaguely and broadly, but it's only like I can explain my point and what I'm trying to say. And besides, I'm sure many people have seen this game, have played it already, and there's tons of YouTube playthroughs, so my commentary is going to be different in this regard to while I'm playing this game. So, just enjoy the cutscenes and my gameplay while I talk. So anyway... I mean, there's just no way they could have had all of that so so cleanly put together with just figuring out the set pieces first. That seems absolutely absurd to me and just crazy. So it just goes back to the fact that Uncharted 3, bottom line, was rushed, okay? They didn't have... They, they did really just do set pieces first. It's very clear. In Uncharted 2, it's not very clear that it just did the set pieces first. You really think they crafted the story first. And I really think they did. I don't I don't buy that PR speak that or that um uh, that defense, that PR defense speak they, they have about Uncharted 3 that hey, hey, whoa, whoa. Hey, this it's cool, man. We 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 came with the set pieces first and then we worked out the story to fit those set pieces. But, uh, and then, then they're saying it's like Uncharted 2. No, because <laughs> cause Uncharted 2 clearly does not have any significantly strange uh, out-of-character attributes, like Talbot running away from you like two or three times in the game, uh, if I recall correctly. That completely goes against his character. And that totally shows that it was created, the game was created off of set pieces first. But this game, this game doesn't have any of that. There had to have been some iterative process they had with Uncharted 2, where they spent the last year of the game's development going over how they're going to tie all of it together and make it work. You know, how they're going to... Um, how this is going to lead to that, this is going to lead to that, how they get here, how they get there. Uncharted 3 doesn't have any of that iterative process, if it was, e if it even happened at all. I mean, if it happened, then it wasn't a very long iterative process, because they had such a short development cycle compared to Uncharted 3, I mean, Uncharted 2. 
<sighs> so maybe they did uh, start with set pieces in Uncharted 2. Maybe they had some ideas like, oh, I want to do this train stuff, or oh, I want to do a, a building falling over. I mean, they could be vague like that, and maybe they didn't have anything really made yet. And so they would make it, and then, you know, see if they could get it working, and then they would craft the story. Are you in? Oh. But Uncharted 3, it feels like they had all these set these these set pieces already made. Like they had them already made. They weren't just vague ideas that someone threw at a board threw out at a board meeting, <laughs> or whatever. Um, it seems like they had them already crafted, probably like a month or two after Uncharted 2 had released, or even like stuff where, um, stuff where they, um. Crap, I lost my train of thought. But you know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, basically, um, they decided to not They decide not to delay the game in favor of sticking to the release date that they set out um, a whole you know year ahead of time. And they sort of just put themselves in a corner. And that's, why Unchar that's how Uncharted 3 turned out the way it did. Um, I st I don't really I don't really buy the fact that they um, had the same they copied the same method as what they did with Uncharted 2. I don't buy it. the The quality and narrative and pacing is so hugely and widely different. It's unreal that the same people made these games. Um, and I'm not saying Uncharted 3's story is horrendous and awful and crappy. I mean, it has some parts of it that are really strange, but overall, it's an enjoyable story. I mean, even with its its flaws in um, pacing and everything else. But yeah, as as I uh, as I'm waiting for this guy over there to move. <laughs> okay, he's going. He's going. He's going. Okay, I got him. All right, so. Now I gotta go around. I gotta take care of this other guy, and this is gonna be tricky because of the way I have to land over here. Okay, what's he doing? Okay, he's he's looking this way, so I don't want to go down yet. All right, so now I want to go down. So see, this is what I'm talking about with the stealth stuff. You can stealth this part of the game where otherwise it looks like you can't. Let me see if I can. If I I I don't think I've ever really tried to stealth this part here, actually. I mean, I stealth those guys all the time, but this I've never really tried. Let me see if I can do it. Um, okay, this guy is going that way. There's a guy up there. Yeah, that's the problem. There's The problem with this part, trying to stealth it, is there's these guys on the second f on the second level of this, of this part. Here, of this section of this area. And I'm trying to find an opening to where I can get someone from behind without being spotted, but I don't know if I can do that. Oh. Uh. Let's see. There's that guy over there, and that guy is still looking. Come on, turn. Turn. Okay, he's going that way. Let me see what he does. Okay. He's going that way. He sits there, then. But where'd that other guy go? Where'd that third guy go on the right? I know there was another guy. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Hello. Where are you going? And that guy's still up there. Where are you going, though? Okay, I see the pattern now. Kind of. Let me see if I can do it or not. Without being spotted. Uh, that's a good no. That's a good no. Oh, brother. Oh, well. That's alright. But it's possible. Like, to some extent, it's possible to try and stealth this part, though really fucking difficult. And the fact that that option is there, it, it, it looks like it's there for you. Um, it looks like you could do it. Like, if I, maybe if I spent, like, the next 20 minutes on figuring out a route where you could actually st not uh, stealth kill through it, then um, I probably could prove that this is, that it's possible. And that Uncharted, the way they built these parts of the game, are more flexible than Uncharted 3. And it's funny because it's not even like this part is 100% intended to be stealthed. Uncharted 3, on the other hand, gives you the false impression, at least 
two to three different times that you can stealth through a section, and then you, you find out you can't because the the enemy placement and how the AI reacts, um, depending on where you go in the environment. And it's just complete and utter bullcrap. And I hated it. I hated how they took that option. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to do that. That was weird. My controller. Ugh. Ugh. It feels weird to play this game again after I've played Rising for so long. But anyway, like I was saying, um, it's just really, really upsetting that they didn't flesh out the stealth stuff a little more in Uncharted 3. And Uncharted 2, I think, had the perfect balance of, I mean, perfect flexibility, really. Um, you know, they designed almost every area to be stealth through, or, like, at least it was possible to. Unless you were purposely getting into um, an action sequence, which, obviously, then you would stealth through. <sighs> so. Oh, crap. I almost didn't see him. And then there's this guy. What is he doing down there? Well, let's see if I can get him with the defender here. Nice! Beautiful headshot. I think I got him anyway. Yeah, he's he's gone. Wow, that was a really clutch headshot. Um, also, yeah, these monkey bars are really pointless. I don't really understand the point to them, other than, I guess, to, you know be cool. Uh, you could just jump down, but I chose to do it just to show you. Anyway, this part is a very he combat heavy part of the sequence, and I'm going to try and stealth it again. I'm going to try and stealth it just like the other part. J I mean, just like the earlier section, but I don't think you could do it. Because um, the guy on the right there, he turns around. He turns back around after you kill this guy on the left. And it sucks. Because that guy on the right is always going to see you because he has the higher ground. Um, if you had the tranquilizer gun, you maybe you could actually stealth this part. But because he sees me going through there, like so, I can't pull him down and avoid and avoid being spotted. And so now I'm put in this tough situation. Crap. Ugh. I mean, this part isn't really that bad. It's just annoying. Um, there's a lot of parts of this game like that. <sighs> oh, brother. So, uh, I don't know what to do, really. I guess I'm just gonna... See, this is what I'm talking about, though, with regards to cover. If you know what you're doing, you can just sit behind cover if you have the most impeccable aim. And it's just that easy. Um, at least with these guys, until you get the shotgunners. But anyway, we're going to continue this in the next part. So, yeah, see ya!